Welcome to Ditch Auto, it's Jared, and today we are here with a Surface Book. This is the Microsoft Surface Book, which is a tablet slash laptop, and I wanna look at using Lightroom with it. Now, Adobe Lightroom has had a lot of updates over the years, and some of the more recent ones uh, play into touch interface and all that good stuff. Um, we have Lightroom on our uh, computers, full on Lightroom. And then we also have Lightroom Mobile, which is available on tablets and phones and all that good stuff. So how do you use Lightroom on a device that has a touch screen with a pen? Um, is it a good experience or is it kind of still a little uh, bit amiss? And so that's what I wanna look at today is we have a Surface Book here. Uh, with the performance base, this is the latest version. And if you're interested more uh, in more about this device, like whether it's a good device or not, um, head on over to our other channel, State of Tech, where we talk about technology, reviews, and all that good stuff. We'll definitely be talking about this device as far as its performance and all that stuff, maybe even kind of talking about how it compares to a MacBook Pro or something along those lines. Um, but it is a, a touch-enabled device that you can use as a tablet. It has a really good pen. And so how does using Lightroom work? Um, so what's cool about this is you press down this button here and you can attach or detach uh, your tablet from the performance base. So now it is a tablet essentially, and uh, I'm able to use this device uh, standalone. Um, what's cool about that is that it's fairly light, it fits in the hand nice, and uh, it kind of replicates a, a thick tablet uh, that you can draw on. And there's lots of cool features that come along with that. The performance base, however, has additional battery and it also has the external GPU, which gives it better performance. So you're gonna get less performance in the graphics department uh, using the tablet without the performance base. What's cool about this is that you can rotate the performance base and snap the tablet onto it like so, and then rotate the device back. And now I have a tablet with the performance base. So now I've got it rotated around uh, and I'm ready to use it. It's, it's a bit heavier now because it's the same, it's basically the same device, laptop and all, just folded over and now in tablet mode. So what we'll do to get into Lightroom is tap on the, uh, I could tap on the start menu or I can go over to my applications list and open Adobe Lightroom. So Adobe Lightroom will work in two different ways on a tablet like this. It will work in full Adobe Lightroom mode, which is what we're looking at first, which is basically what you would get on your normal laptop or your PC or your Mac. You'd get a full experience in Lightroom. Uh, but then you can also go into tablet mode, and tablet mode is more along the lines of the experience that you would have in Lightroom Mobile. So it's kind of cool that you have that option to use Lightroom Mobile because that's definitely a much more user-friendly interface for touch, uh, but then you could still use Lightroom just as it is, the typical Lightroom that you're used to in tablet mode, in this version of tablet mode. So we have a photo here of, um, got my little puppy and I can go into develop mode and uh, then I'm in develop mode and I can do typical things like make adjustments to my images by you know uh, adjusting the sliders so this is all typical stuff I can do and as you can see here it may or may not be um, as fast of a process as I would be able to with a mouse or a trackpad sometimes I think using the mouse or the trackpad might be a little uh, a little bit faster than using the pen, um, especially if you're trying to adjust a lot of images. Where the touch interface really shines is when you use the pen to do cleanup work or you know different brush work on your image. So for example, if I wanted to kind of pinch to zoom in here, and you can see there's like a leaf here on the ground and maybe it's a little distracting and I would want to remove it from my image, I can go and grab my spot removal tool and I could paint over that. You can see there's a little bit of lag. That's kind of typical of this device. Uh, it isn't a quad core processor. It's a dual core processor with 16 gigs of RAM. That's what this has. And it is a little laggy in using Lightroom. Um, that's just typical of uh, using Lightroom on any device 
unless you have a really powerful device. So I was able to do that brush work there. Um, I might zoom in on my puppy and do uh, a little bit of, um, of brushing here and I can increase the exposure, maybe increase the sharpness or something like that if I needed to uh, just by coming in here. Maybe I wanna brighten up his, uh, the top of his head a little bit, call a little bit of attention to uh, the top of his head and his ears. So we'll just go ahead and paint in that area like so. And you can see I have my control point right there and I can kind of tap and, and drag my control point around. You can see here I'm getting kind of a, a ruby lith overlay of what I've done and I can make some little adjustments here. Maybe bump up my shadows just a little bit. A little bit of contrast so that it doesn't flatten that out too much and then tap done when I'm done. Pinch to go back. And so it's kind of neat that you have this interface to work on the images. However, I just don't necessarily think it's a super fast way to work uh, because the pin is cool and all, but it's definitely not uh, a fast interface to work in. All right, so when you wanna jump into tablet mode and go with Lightroom Mobile, there is an icon over here on the left-hand side, Touch Workspace, and Touch Workspace will get you into that mode. Um, sometimes, and I've had it happen, sometimes it will automatically ask you if you wanna go into the touch interface because Lightroom will know that you are on a touch device and it will ask you. However, it doesn't always do that, so sometimes you have to toggle that option. So we could choose between any of our images down here, just choose through the catalog or whatever images that you have uh, loaded at the time. We also have our local adjustments, so as you kind of zoom around here from side to side, you can do that by finger or with the stylus, and you just simply tap and slide to make adjustments. Um, so as I tap and slide, I can make adjustments. You can see it also brought over the adjustments that I had previously made. Um, so it works in, you know, it works as a standalone. It's not jumping between two different applications. Um, we then also have some effects. So basically I can come here and we've got different black and white filters. We've got um, different settings that we can choose, different color settings. This is where it really starts to look like Lightroom mobile on your phone or your tablet. We can add an effect such as vignettes or film grain, uh, general sharpening, punch, um, and then there's also some kind of video looking filters and stuff as well. So all you have to do is tap on those and select them. You then also have uh, a cropping tool here, which allows you different cropping options and uh, rotations so that you can go and recompose your shot uh, in this touch interface. It is very limited, the touch interface, and it's very buggy, it seems, on this device. It crashes on me all the time and it tends to be a little problematic. So I'm hoping that maybe that's uh, something that Adobe is working on updating, or maybe it's an issue with the device of, in and of itself. Once you have your photo ready, up at the top right-hand corner, you can actually edit in Photoshop and export the image out of Lightroom into Photoshop. You can email the photo to somebody, you can add it to a quick collection, or create a virtual copy. You can exit and go right back to regular Lightroom view and, uh, and have all of the additional options that are in Lightroom. The challenge with uh, this version of Lightroom here versus the touch-enabled version of Lightroom is that when you are in tablet mode like this, it becomes very hard for you to use keyboard shortcuts. If you pull up the keyboard, you can, of course, do keyboard shortcuts, um, but it's still just kind of a pain in the butt because then you have the keyboard covering up a portion of Lightroom, potentially even where you need to click while you're doing the keyboard shortcut. That's a big gripe that I have with using Photoshop and a tablet such as this. Um, I think that additional tablet uh, tools like tablet monitors or the Cintiq or the Wacom tablets are probably a much better option for using Lightroom, using Photoshop, simply because it's just a challenge to not have your keyboard and your trackpad or your mouse or whatever else there. Um, with a tablet, a Wacom tablet or a Cintiq or something like that, you're able to use that interface while still having everything else. If I had another, like a Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse, and then this like on a little stand, that might be the best option for me. Uh, but then why would I purchase this laptop in order to do that? I probably would have been better off just using my existing computer 
and an additional like drawing device, tablet type device. So, you know, it's it's coming, it's soon, it's further along than it's ever been before. The ability to use a kind of two-in-one type device like this with Lightroom and Photoshop, it's just not there yet in my opinion. I definitely wouldn't wanna do any heavy work on this device, even in regular mode, uh, in regular laptop mode, simply because it just isn't uh, that powerful of a device. I'm loading some pretty large images on there and it tends to choke up and have some issues. And going into tablet mode, definitely is still buggy, it seems to have some issues, and so, proceed with caution. It's definitely fun to play with, and don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed using the pen and using uh, Lightroom and Photoshop, the interface, in, uh, in this different way. I just don't think it's ready completely yet for the mainstream, and it's definitely not uh, gonna increase your productivity. It's gonna slow you down a little bit. Um, but hey, if you want that pen experience, if you want uh, you know, to be able to use a stylus in Photoshop or Lightroom, I would say this is probably one of the better devices to do it with, simply because it's a two-in-one, uh, you have the tablet mode, you, you can use it as a laptop, you don't have to use the pen, you could simply uh, reattach the pen, I can detach uh, the device from, you know, and go right back to a normal experience such as what I was used to. So I could rotate this right back around, snap it right into place, and now I can use it as a laptop again. One final note, with the performance base uh, that's attached, it has a GPU, which is a graphics card, in the base. So when it's attached, it's using the graphics card from within the base instead of the onboard graphics that is uh, within the display here. So if you import images in uh, into Lightroom and then attempt to, with the performance base attached and you attempt to detach the performance base, you won't be able to detach it until you close out Lightroom detach it, and then you can open up Lightroom again. It's a problem that I think this unit has with switching between those two graphics cards. It's probably something that'll be fixed with an update in the future, but for right now it was a little frustrating because I felt like the device wouldn't let me detach from the base. It was really frustrating. But nonetheless, it's a cool device. Don't get me wrong, I sounded like it was horrible in this video. It is a lot of fun to use, and if you wanna see my full review, head on over to State of Tech, and I'll have that there for you so that you can get a little bit more, we can get a little bit more technical about what this device is good for and what it's not. Thanks so much for checking out Ditch Auto. We hope you subscribe to our channel here so that you could be notified when we come up with new videos for you, and uh, don't forget that we have a photography challenge going on during the year of 2000. 2017. If you want to join us, check out the other videos in our channel here um, and make sure to join us in our Facebook group, uh, which is linked below in the description. Thanks a lot, and we hope to see you next time here on Ditch Auto.